start with the opening statement from Coach and then open up for questions. Well, good afternoon. Good to see everybody. July, end of July, talking basketball, some hoops. That's always a, a good day in my world. But, um, yeah, uh, good summer so far. Uh, we're excited about the journey that's coming up next week and then the opportunities to, to really grow, I think, on and off the court and um, get a little bit better. Um, we were on practice number eight today of the ten for the foreign trip, so that was the eighth practice for us. Um, so moving right along, um, we have everybody here but one player, so we will take 13 of them over there with us. Uh, but yeah, I think the summer's been good to us. Uh, we've gotten to know each other a little bit better. We've done some of the off the off the court things, some on the court things, um, given them time to recover. Uh, but certainly want them to grow and, and develop in, in many areas, and, and I think we've been able to do that. So, again, looking forward to it. I'm excited about where we are today. Um, but it's July, and uh, we're not trying to do anything crazy special now, but just trying to find ways to get better. And fortunately, we um, are afforded the opportunity to go over there and do something. So we're going to take advantage of it. Um, and give it everything we got. So mark the tour itself. Have you ever taken one with a team before? And, and what do you hope to get out of it, maybe on the court and off the court? Yeah, no, this is my first one. I had one scheduled at SFA, and they went a year ago. Um, but then I had come here, so I missed out on that one. Um, but, yeah, Italy and Croatia for us. So mostly Rome and then kind of through Naples into Sorrento and then to Dubrovnik, Croatia is where we will take our travels. Um, and I think you want, I mean, you want to get a lot of things out of it first and foremost. I, well, I want them to all come back and I want us to be safe and, and have a good experience. Um, and then I, obviously off the court, it's a, it's a great bonding. Um, they're going to learn. There'll be history. Um, we've kind of challenged them to be open-minded and accept the cultures that we're going to go into. And most of them have not been over there or to Europe. Um, so this will be new for many of our players traveling uh, across the water um, over there. Um, and then, of course, on the court, I, you know, I want to develop some things. I want to see them play in a competitive environment, especially the, the new kids. Um, it'll be some new rotations. We'll throw a lot of different things out there, I imagine, different lineups, things like that. Um, and I would bet that we probably have 10% of what we run in. So this is a very watered down version of what we, you know, will look like and the things that we will do. Um, but it's enough and um, allow us to go play and function at the, at the rate that we want to. Narrative of your program, I think, after that Iowa game has changed. You guys have gone from the underdog to people know about you now. I don't know, we ask your, your players about it. Are you addressing any different with them? Is it, you know, it's easier to be the hunter than it is the hunted? And that's um, part of it. Not much yet. Um, we have briefly discussed that, but no, I think that will come more once we get into the fall and have those team retreats and really dive into it. Um, this time, I mean, we don't really even know who we're playing. I don't know if the teams we're playing are overly worried about West Virginia or who we are or have any idea what we're going to bring to the table either. Um, so it's really just uh, solely focused on us in the summer, just how do we get better and you know finding that little 1% you know, so to speak, coach talk, but just trying to get a little bit better every day. Um, you know, I've really pulled back from like the breakdown drills and those types of things in the summer and more just five on five and three on three and function and teach and learn and learn through playing rather than just slowing down the reps. Cause I don't know if I'd get their attention for too long if I was breaking too much down this time of year. But yeah, to answer your question, we'll wait probably just a little bit on, on how, you know, the expectations and things like that. Do you sense a confidence in your players that maybe was lacking a year ago? Uh, well, yeah, I don't know if it was lacking, but I will say I, the, what a difference a year makes is what I would tell you, just the feel that I have right now that, than I did a year ago for lots of different reasons for the players. Um, but you got to think a year ago at this time, I, you know, me and a couple coaches and maybe Jordan and Zaya were the only people that knew what in the world was going on and what this is supposed to look like and you're teaching like crazy. And now the players get to teach a lot of it because they know the system and the structure. And so that's what's changed the most is I can take a step back. My coaching staff is all back. So we returned everybody from the coaching staff so I can allow them to, you know, spread their wings in a way and take over their positional work and, um, yeah, and their side of the ball. And, and I think we're functioning at a pretty high rate right now. What kind of player did you get with Sidney Shaw? And is it is it a fair assumption to say, okay, well, this is going to be the new Lauren – fields or are they two different type of players? Well, yeah, I think they're different. No, Sydney's been great. Uh, we thought she was a talented basketball player when we got her. Um, really thought we could get a lot more out of her. 
um, than maybe even what she was able to do at Auburn. I don't know if she just needed a change of scenery. You guys asked her, so you know she could have answered that question better than me. But no, she's been really good. She's very talented. It's you know kind of teaching her you know the right shots and in our system what we want her to take. And um, you know if she'll just do that, you know she's you know, she can score the basketball. We'll challenge her on the defensive end to guard like you know that, that we guard. And so I think she's learning through all of that. But um, no, she seems to have transitioned really well. Played really well today and you guys probably saw some of that um, so no yeah what position she exactly plays and what role I don't know that we have to define that but yeah she's probably trending <laughs> toward uh, the Lauren Jayla kind of filling in there probably she can handle the ball so she'll probably put we'll put the ball in her hands a little bit and give Jordan and hopefully JJ a little bit of a break that was some of the intent with Sydney as well so she's very versatile I think she could le legitimately play three different positions for us if we want her to um, not sure I want to do that yet it's a little early but um, we'll probably get there with her she didn't miss. Has that been the case in the other practices? Oh, no, she missed. She missed a pull up. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, no, yeah, no. I mean, she's been our best shooter through through the summer camp or through these practices and some of the stuff that we chart. So she has shot it as well or better than anybody um, up to date. Um, but it's multiple. I think she can shoot it. You saw some mid-range. She has the ability to get to the rim. She's a great athlete. She plays with a lot of passion. So no, I'm excited about her. That there's, you thought you can get more out of her. What does that look like? Like, what did we not see from her at Auburn, maybe? Yeah, just uh, I think it's just more of like functioning within what we do. So I think on the defensive end, some of the shots, you know, so I get after her. You weren't at the part of the practice where I got in her a little bit for one of the shots that she took. So it's really just teaching her. I just want efficiency to go up with her. I thought of her efficiency numbers weren't great a year ago. And if we can get efficiency up, and that's take a three instead of a heels on the line too. you know, a mid range. Can we get it all the way into a paint touch? Right. Can you give up that one to get your assist numbers up because you drew two people as opposed to taking a difficult shot? And so those were maybe some things that I saw that I would like to improve upon. And I think if she'll do that, then all of her statistics will naturally go up. Last year's team obviously built on speed, early opportunity offense, trying to do those things. This year it looks like you might have the players to be a little wider in offensive focus. Is that one of your challenges, I guess, for this year, not giving up those things you did great last year, but also getting to the secondary break, the post up, those kind of things on offense? Well, yeah, I think we have an opportunity to be more versatile than we were a year ago. We were a little bit limited from a numbers. If you look at us, I think our size, I think we look different. I think we're a little bit bigger um, across the board still. You know, Jordan and JJ will be small, but they're dynamite. But outside of that, I think we've gotten a little bit bigger across the board. But when you really sit down in this, maybe more information than you guys want, but when we look really evaluated at the end of the year and looked at the statistics and those types of things, we were like, I think, seventh, fifth, whatever we were in the country defensively, led the nation in turnover margin, second or third in steals. Like, I mean, we were an elite defensive team. You watch this play Iowa, that's what everybody talked about. But I've tried to, like, I don't want to just be defined by the defensive end. A lot of people have kind of tried to define us a little bit by that, and, and I don't really want that. I don't want that in recruiting that people think we're just going to be based on the defensive end. And we weren't bad offensively. I think we were, I want to say, like 45th in the country offensively. So we were not bad offensively. We just weren't quite as good as we were on the defensive end. So it's, yeah, can, how do we get the offense better without maximizing or minimizing what we did on the defensive end? That's the goal. One of the things we didn't do offensively when we went and studied it and we looked at like the top 15 offenses in the country is we're, we were about a one and a half threes less than the top 15 teams in the country per game. So we made about 7.1. Those top offenses make about eight and a half a game. So, but we had more possessions. So it was field goal percent efficiency again for us. So how do we – do we need to create more possessions to get those up? You know, that's what, four and a half points a game or something like that is what we were missing on the offensive end. So if it's as simple as that, like let's take and make a few more threes and let's recruit a few more shooters and let's really kind of put an emphasis on that. So we've brought that up with our team. Haven't addressed it a ton yet because we'll just kind of play this out and see what it looks like when we get to Europe. But those are things that have caught our eye that we know we need to work on. Um, we do have a little more size. Maybe it's dump it into the post where we can finish at a higher rate at the rim, you know, those types of things. So I think we know what areas we can improve upon. Um, we tried to address some of it in recruiting. I don't think we hit it all yet, but we'll continue that process as we go through it. But I think we've identified some things and some steps that we can take to be even more lead on the offensive end. I'm just kind of curious. For you personally, just to maybe kind of see a side of you here, um, the, the, the Iowa game last year, how many times have you watched it since? Or is that something that just got burnt and forgot about? Yeah, I have not watched it. Yeah. 
I remember it vividly. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> That's one I don't know if I have to watch back too much. That one, uh, that one is in my mind and forever will be. And I'll watch it back at some point, I'm sure. You mentioned versatility a couple of times. You talked about the increased size with this year's team. I know you're still three-plus months out from the start of the season, but does creating a starting five, does that almost seem a little bit more challenging this year compared to last year? It seems like you've got more depth and more options this year. Yeah, it could present itself to be that. I don't, you know, And whether it's starting five or just I think rotation probably would be the better way to say that is, yeah, there's going to be some battles here with the rotation, um, but we just have so much – we have so many more options. So for like a Kylie Blackston, I can move her in different spots and play her all over the place. Kyle Watson, we got playing literally like three different positions. You know, a year ago, she'd never played a second of the top of the press or the zone and things like that. That now that's where she was all day today, if you saw her. So we just have so many more options. We can go really big or really big, bigger for us, you know, and we can put some six, three, two, six, three or four kids out there together. We have a little bit better passing and skill out of the post. Um, you know, we've got a little more size with Destiny Agabata on the wing, you know, and Zaya's a strong kid. And so we just have, we're, we're getting a little healthier. We've got bodies, we've got options. So it's really depth rotation. that's probably going to take some time. Um, you know, some of those kids, I call them, their bank account's pretty good. JJ's bank account's pretty good. I think she's probably going to start for us. You know, Jordan Harrison's bank account's pretty good. Like, I don't know that we're going to – Kyle Watson's got a pretty good bank account. You know, <sighs> Kylie Watson started a bunch of games, you know, for us. And so, you know, for the most part, I think there's some spots that are – I would never say they're permanent, but there's some that are – those bank accounts are pretty big, and I don't know if anybody's going to take it from them. But we'll, uh, I want it to be competitive, and I think it is right now. Does Zaya fit into that, and how does that feel to get that energy off the sideline on the court this year? Yeah, no, Zaya's still working through it. She's still not quite back, you know, fully. I mean, she's participating, but she's, got, you know, got to get a little bit better shape and get back. She's missed two years, but the kid's been with me for, you know, this is year five for Zaya and I together, and we've grown together, and she's grown up a ton, and her IQ is, is really good. She's a great passer. She's not nearly as explosive or athletic as she as she was and, and powerful, so we've got to work through that. She's got to work through that to get back but I you know in our little action today I thought she was fine and did a good job and it's just her understanding what her body's going to allow her to do until she can get all the way back but I mean she'll take as many char like Jordan took 30 whatever charges last year if Zaya gets the minute she'll take 30 plus charges and she'll do all the toughness and dive on the floor so she'll find a role and we need her because she just does understand the game and understand our system at a high rate. Zaya and uh, Mosberry, what, I guess what are kind of their roads back to being full participation 100% and then with, with both of them too, they, they were in knee braces today. Do you kind of foresee them playing in a knee brace most of this season or is that something that will eventually come off? Yeah, I'm not sure on the knee brace. I'll kind of leave that up to Dylan and the training staff to probably – none of them ever want to wear them. So if they can get them off, I'm sure they'll get them off, and especially mentally. I think most of the kids don't like it. Some kids do like it mentally. It makes them just a comfort with having those. Zaya's fully cleared. She's back. I mean, she we have she'll play in Europe. We have that expectation. Shayla will not. She's not quite cleared all the way for full contact. So she's gotten back to shooting and – some skill work and those types of things. So her her full release date's probably coming later in the summer, but she's not too far off. Um, but yeah, Zaya's good, Shayla close. Is having that additional size, is it fair to expect to be a better rebounding team? Or what, what do you expect that to do for you guys in that? In that yeah, no, for sure. Gives you more options, bigger bodies, take up more space. Um, you know, we know that was a weakness of ours as well. So that's how do you get better at recruiting? I think most of the time, you go recruit it. You know, we can go teach it and do the fundamental breakdown, but the best rebounders that we've known all across all levels are just, uh, you know, they kind of have that will and the want to go do it. Um, but yeah, I think we've got a little bit more size to rebound. We can move, like I said, Kaya is a really good rebounder and us in rebounding, but maybe now she's a guard instead of a, you know, playing like the four for us. So just more options. Besides Sydney, uh, your impressions of the other newcomers in the early going? Yeah, well, no, I've liked all of them. They've all done a great job. So Sydney Shaw would be one. Celia CC, we call her. So CC, if you hear that term, that's Celia. Um, that was the junior college post from Northwest Florida. Has been really good. Um, good hands, good feel, great passer as a post player. Can really score it. At really all three levels, hasn't shot the three great yet. But I do know she has the ability to step out and shoot the three. She hit some high post jumpers even today when we got after it a little bit. So I think she'll be really good. Destiny Agabata was here last spring. Now, she didn't play, but she graduated high school early um, from California and was here, you know, basically sitting out but practicing. So she's been around. So I kind of forget sometimes that she's still a freshman and, and a newcomer. 
but she, she'll do some things, get really good things, big body, good feel, great skill work. If you go watch her do her skills, she's a very skilled player. And so it'll just be her getting caught up to the speed of, of the game as a freshman. Jordan Thomas, our post player um, from Dallas as a freshman, is, is going to be really, really good for us. She's had a good summer and continues to get better and, and will get better. But again, great feet, great hands, big body. Um, played at a high level AU basketball, um, so she she'll be used to that. That um, should come fairly quickly for her. Um, Sydney Woodley got here from Long Beach, so she's the newest one that's only been here for just a couple of weeks. So she's just getting started. Um, Sydney, she had to graduate from Long Beach before she could come, so um, she's just behind from the understanding everything. But she's a really really smart kid who has caught on to some stuff much quicker than I thought. And then Defna is the last one. She's not here, so she's over playing with her national team. So we'll get her. We won't get her until the fall semester. How good is she? Sounds like she had some nice options. Yeah, she did have some really good options. Um, so I think we uh, feel very fortunate that we got her. And, and we, we have three post players, uh, seniors, that will graduate. So we needed some, we needed some youth in the post, and we needed to continue to get some size and skill. So she's another very, very skilled European post player that can play inside, will step out, can definitely shoot the three, um, can pass it a little bit. She can get a rebound and even kind of lead the break. You know, she's going to beat you, like, with her speed, but she can actually, like, dribble the basketball on the open floor. So, yeah, we're going to have some competition at that position without a doubt. You've got enough players now to scrimmage a team. I know you still got the guys around. I'm sure you'll still use them, but it seems like the the top programs have those and are able to scrimmage against each other. Is that something you're going to continue? That what you try want to try to do? Yeah. Well, again, I think you want options. If we want to scrimmage against each other to see that competitiveness, uh, I want to have that option. If we want to go bring in the guys for bigger, stronger, faster, I want to be able to bring in the guys, and and we will do that. And I mean, there's a lot of times too, though. Like for us, we'll put them on two teams, and like Jordan and JJ are both point guards, but then we obviously know they're going to play a ton together. So then I need, you know, somebody else or maybe the guys group to go put them on the same team to give it, you know, the right look that I want to get. So, um, but it's, be yeah, way better. So we got 13, we'll have 14. So we will be able to play against each other. We have subs, we can get people in and out. I mean, some of it too is keeping Jordan and JJ fresh. Like I don't, Jordan Harrison doesn't need every rep right now. She's got the coach Kellogg system pretty well down. Like I don't need her to get every single rep. I need her to stay fresh and healthy and say, obviously same thing with JJ at this point, but um, yeah, taking reps, taking some of that, get the new guys reps. Um, yeah, it's all beneficial. That's trending in the way you want to go to have the, enough players to be able to do that. Yeah, no, we're the, well, yeah, we got 13, 12 that are healthy right now without Shayla being in the mix. So we can play, you know, five on five with a sub, you know, move people to different positions. So again, it's just, it's a long season, guys. And we're sitting here talking on July, whatever today is about basketball, and we're like full practicing, which is, that's weird. Um, a little bit. Normally, that's not what we do this time of year, but it does give us a little advantage. Um, may pull back when we get to the fall and give them a little time to recover a little bit and then kind of get back after it. With, uh, you know, you mentioned Destiny, you know, she came here last, I guess it would have been after Christmas? Or, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, she's from California, a uh, highly regarded kind of recruit. Uh, Jordan Thomas, uh, you know, Texas. I mean, these aren't exactly highly regarded recruits from the next state over or close by. Do you get a sense that there are a lot of doors opening now on the recruiting trail where you can stretch your arms a little bit as far as, you know, let's see if we can go in here or go here? Yeah, yeah. well, I think I thought that when we came in here, to be honest, a year ago. I, I mean, I just thought the WV gave you a national brand. That's a very recognizable brand. When we go recruiting in California, like, hey, go Mountaineers. Like, you'll walk through an airport and it's, hey, go Mountaineers or in Texas, wherever it is. Like, people recognize that that brand. Um, and so I think that allows us to go recruit. Um, a lot of these are connections, um, you know, that you have as coaches too. I mean, Jordan Thomas, my daughter played in the same AU program and I'd coached several kids off of, you know, her program. And, you know, several of my coaches had recruited Destiny, um, okay. you know, before I had not, she wasn't, you know, she's a top 80 kid in the country. So I wasn't really getting many of those at SFA. Um, but there was a, a little bit of a connection there. And so some of it's connections, but yeah, if those top 100 kids, I think we should be on the phone with the majority of those kids and they do take our calls and that's what's helped like with an Iowa type game as so many people watched it that it makes that conversation a little bit easier now um, at least initially and people get excited about what we're doing and want to be a part of that uh, but we need to continue it but I certainly think our you know we, well, we, we want to start regionally but then just start to balloon that thing out and we'll go as far as we need to to find the right the right talent. It, it seems like with those two freshmen and I know like you said it's July their first year uh, kind of hard to 
you know, get the crystal ball out. But it seems like there's some potential there with, with those two. I mean, is there any kind of early signs of, of them say, hey, you know, maybe they, you know, come in first year and, and make some kind of impact? Yeah, well, I sure hope so. Yeah. Um, you know, I, yeah, we. I still want to recruit freshmen. I know we we need to stay old and we need to have some veterans, and and that's kind of the the mantra right now in, in college athletics with the transfer portal. But I believe in like the program type kid that will be here for three, four, four years. Um, I think those two are talented. I, I hope they find their way into a a niche and a role on this team. And I don't. Again, I'm not dishing out playing time, you know, and, and thinking that way yet or in the summer. And we'll give them all looks in Europe and kind of give them a head start there, and then. We got a lot of practices coming up too in the fall, so they'll have plenty of opportunity to prove their worth. Any touristy things that you've scattered out in Italy, Croatia that you want to do? Well, yeah, all of it. Um, I mean, the Colosseum will be cool in Rome, so that would be one right off the bat. Um, I mean, I'm a water beach guy, and we have not really had a family vacation. Uh, we went to my wife's family's place over the fourth, so I don't laughingly don't call that a vacation um bless their hearts and they're great and i love them to death i'm very blessed with the in-laws um but so some of the beach stuff the getting out on the boat on the water and i think we're kayaking through some caves and some different things like that so i know two of the places will be on the water so probably looking forward to just kind of chilling when i can or going out for dinner and eating obviously some italian food and i heard they have some pretty good wine so i might try that when i'm over there as well Family going with you. My family will be there, yeah. My wife and daughter will come <coughs> that day late because Kaylee's playing in a, a NCAA basketball academy this weekend. But Cam and I will go with the team, and they'll come a day later. Less exciting than that. Are there any roster eligibility concerns this time around this year? We um, no. We are uh, – no, we don't have any of those. So, yeah, we're all good. Mark, we brought up the Iowa game a number of times just here in the 20 minutes we've been here with you. When you're walking around town in the airport out recruiting – how long does it take before someone comes up to you and like, hey, the Iowa game was great, or brings that up to you? Um, not very long, normally. Um, if you know, yeah, once they either figure out who I am or know who I am, then it comes up normally pretty quickly. I was just recruiting. This was on the, a weekend ago, but I just sit down and there was a, a woman to my left with an open seat, and I just said, hey, how are you? You know, you, you look friendly. So I sat here. It was kind of my joke with her, you know, and. She, we were, we were going to Dallas, I guess, to recruit, and she lives in Wheeling and down there. And so she asked me where I was going, and I actually happened to be from Dallas. So we talked about that. She asked me why I lived, where I was coming from, and I said, West Virginia. And she said, do you work up there? And I said, yes, told her who I was. Oh, my gosh. I've got to call my husband. He will think you're the greatest thing. So I'm, like, on FaceTime with her husband, like, in the airplane, or air, yeah, on the airplane talking to this guy. And he brings up, first thing he says is, we watch that Iowa game, you know, and so you just get stories like that all the time that are, you know, people paid attention and are paying attention and paying, paying attention to women's basketball in general. Um, but certainly I hope we're, we're building some excitement around here. And I think season ticket sales are already up at an all time high and we want to continue to just grow it and build it and uh, have something truly special. And hopefully we get one of those Iowa type games here in Morgantown pretty soon. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you, guys.